Hey guys, so the final thing we're going to be going over in Unit 6 is going to be triangle applications and exact values. There's four examples that I'm going to work with you guys, um, and it'll go pretty quick. I'm going to make sure that you try to pause at example four so you can try this one on your own just so you have a better understanding. All right, let's get started with number one. So Candace is watching a bird that is sitting on... Um, on a nest in a tree. So I'm just gonna draw my basic little tree here. We'll put Candace about here. She is watching the bird in the tree. Um, the bird is also watching her at an angle of depression of, oh, it's supposed to say 24 degrees. I don't know why it doesn't say 24 degrees. Um, so that means that here, it's an angle of 24 degrees. Now, these are technically alternate interior angles, which if you know, if you remember anything about alternate interior angles, they are equal. So this angle here is also going to be 24 degrees. Um, and we'll go from there. Let's see. Candace is standing 20 feet from the tree. So we know that this here is 20 feet. All right, um, could she possibly run up, jump, and grab this, grab it, or is the bird too high for her to reach? Now, obviously, we don't have to technically answer that question. We're just basically trying to find the height here. So if we're using Sokotoa, um, based on what we're, we're going to reference this 24 degree angle since we're finding um, the opposite and we have the adjacent, we can use tangent of the 24 degree angle is equal to opposite over adjacent. That means that we would use 20 times tangent of the 24 degrees to find our height. Um, for this one, you'll want to make sure that your mode is in degrees. All right, we have 20 times tangent of 24, and that's going to give us 8.9 feet. Now, depending on how tall Candace is, if she, and if she's got some hops, she probably could reach that. Maybe if she's like 6'2". Um, has a good vertical, she could definitely reach it. Now, obviously, you don't have to answer that question. We were just trying to find the height. And that's going to be the first one. Um, it is not giving me any information other than to find the value of the other five trig functions. Now, it's supposed to say if sine is equal to 5 over 9 and tangent is less than 0. All right, if sine is 5 over 9, that means that we know that the opposite is 5. Our hypotenuse is 9 adjacent. We need to figure out what that is. If tangent is less than 0, which is opposite over adjacent, that means one of these has to be negative. And if opposite's not negative, our adjacent is going to be negative here. So if we were to draw this, it would be over here in quadrant 2. Hypotenuse 9. Y value 5. Um, we can use Pythagorean theorem. You will be using Pythagorean theorem quite often in these to find the missing length. So... We have um, 5 squared plus b squared equals c squared. 25 plus b squared equals 81. That means that b squared is equal to 56. And b is equal to the square root of 56, which can be simplified to look like a negative 2 square roots of 14. Now, I've put negative because it is on the left side of the x-axis, so it will be a negative 2 square roots of 14. Now, um, they want you to find all other five trig functions. I'm just going to go ahead and write uh, cosine. Well, I guess I'll just write them out, all out. Tangent. Our cosine is going to be negative 2 square roots of 14 over the hypotenuse, which is 9. Tangent opposite 5 over adjacent, which is negative 2 square roots of 14. 
All right, and then the other three are going to be the, these reciprocals. So we will do um, sine is 5 over 9. That means that cosecant is 9 over 5. Secant is going to be the opposite of cosine. 9 over negative 2 square root of 14. And then we have cotangent, which will be the opposite of tangent. Negative 2 square root of 14 over 5. All right, number three. If the point, it's supposed to say negative four comma six lies on the terminal side of the angle, find the exact value of the six trig function. So if it is negative four, six, that will put us over here. We've got negative four, six. We have to find our hypotenuse. We have 36 plus 16 equals C squared. Sorry, guys, I've got the hiccups. So then that means that 52 equals C squared, and C is equal to the square root of 52, which can also be rewritten as 2 to the square root of 13. Now, just like that, we have um, all of our things that we need for our trig, trig identity. So we have the hypotenuse. Our opposite is 6. Adjacent is negative 4. And we can write them out. We have sine, which is going to be 6 over 2 square roots of 13, which is really just going to be 3 over the square root of 13 if it's simplified. And for, for the sake of time, and we'll go ahead and leave every other the radicals at the bottom for now. Um, then we have cosine, our katoa adjacent, um, negative 4 over 2 square root of 13. When simplified, will just be negative 2 over the square root of 13. And then we have our tangent. Now, for the sake of space, I'm not going to write the other three. Just know that it, they are the reciprocals of each of these. So we have tangent, which is going to be our um, opposite over adjacent, 6 over negative 4, which gives me 3 over negative 2. All right, and I think you guys can figure out the rest of those three. And last but not least, if the point, well, it's supposed to be the point three, negative seven, lies on the terminal side. Now three, negative seven, that'll put us down here. Again, we have to find our hypotenuse. I'm gonna go ahead and square those and add them together, 9, 49, whoop, that's 58. So the square root of 58 is equal to our radius. Um, and we're just going to leave it as the square root of 58. So we have our hypotenuse, square root of 58, our opposite, which is going to be negative 7, and adjacent, which is going to be 3. Um, and again, you're just finding the identities here. We have our sine opposites over the hypotenuse, which, oh, sorry, I dropped my pencil. It's going to be negative 7 over the square root of 58. Um, cosine adjacent over the hypotenuse, 3 over the square root of 58. And then tangent opposite over adjacent, which is going to be negative 7 over 3. All right, again, you guys can figure out those reciprocals. Cotangent will be the opposite, 3 over negative 7. Secant will be square root of 58 over 3. And then our cosecant will be square root of 58 over negative 7. Okay, and that is um, triangle applications.